I think what's happening is the time is coming nearer by which she was going to have this referendum. She's now being obliged to confront reality. It's all very well to say a few years out, oh, I guarantee this and I will do that. Um, but now she's coming up to facing the reality. The other thing is uh, she doesn't have a, a clear majority um, that is sustainable uh, for independence. I think she knows that. Uh, and uh, with all the uncertainties that have come about in the economy because of COVID, uh, most people won't want to experiment at this time. I think she is beginning to face up to all of those things. I mean, I ask again, I've asked on your programme before, what are they going to trade in? You know, the Bank of England has said they can't trade in sterling, except that last time. Um, the um, European Bank wasn't so keen on letting them trade in euros either, and they'd have to apply for the EU and all the rest of it. What are they going to trade in? I mean, we drams or something. You know, I mean, yeah. come on, Nicola. I know, well, there's no answers to any of these questions, Anne, because, of course, she lives in this delusional fantasy world that the EU are going to allow an independent Scottish mem uh, an independent Scotland membership uh, without adopting the EU. That, they're quite simply not. So the whole project is a fantasy. And that's why I think she's actually wanted to extend the coronavirus crisis, because the longer coronavirus is seen as a major issue, in Scotland, uh, the more that she can blame it for delaying IndyRef 2. Now, the issue is, Anne, she got Omicron terribly wrong and she yes. has actually committed huge self-harm to large parts of the Scottish economy. Why isn't she being held to account by the mainstream media, Anne? Oh, I, th I think she will be uh, over time if she tries to sustain a position which she's followed throughout, which is that whatever she does, she mustn't follow uh, what England is doing. You know, she must uh, do something different. Generally, something much tougher, something harsher, something more restrictive. Um, and, and she believed that that was the political path to take. I think now that is beginning to wear thin. People want to get back to normal. They see south of the border <clears throat> much closer to normality than Scotland is. Uh, and uh, I, I think she's actually damaging herself. But I think she's clever enough to realise that. Um, and, and to take the necessary steps. But what she cannot do, no matter how clever she is, is to have a referendum without the say-so of Westminster. And at the moment, I think most people would buy into the argument. Come on, you know, this is not the time to foster instability and doubts about the future. That's why I don't want Boris to resign. I don't want the instability now. Uh, we're in a period where we've got to get the economy up and running again. We've got to iron out the, 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 the Brexit things. Uh, we've got to do all that stuff. And this is not the time to start fostering uncertainty and risk. And I think most sensible people know that.